In today's video, we are going to take a deeper dive into shared libraries in Jenkins. Are you new here? If you are, welcome. And if you are new here, you don't know who I am. My name is Darren Pope, and I'm a developer advocate for CloudBees. In a previous video, we went through the basics of using a shared library with Jenkins. In today's video, we're going to go through one of the sections that we did not go through in that video, and we're going to be talking today about the resources directory. Let's pick up where we left off in the last video. If you didn't watch that video yet, the link for that video will be down in the description. All right, so let's go ahead and log in to my existing controller. And we have a job that's called test pipeline. And I've run it once, but let's go ahead and take a quick review on it. So if we take a look at it here, we can see that we've got at library, we're pulling in shared library, and we're just doing a very simple hello world. And we were passing in two parameters that were within a map. What we're going to do today is break down how that shared library step actually works. And we're going to externalize how we were calling the echo line that is under the hood for hello world. So let's first take a look at hello world. So in the shared library, the link for this will also be down in the description. We're going to go to vars, and then we're going to go to hello world. So again, if you haven't watched the previous video, go back and watch that so you can understand all of these details because we're not going to go into that today. But as a quick recap, we have here hello world.groovy inside of the vars directory. And we were calling sh echo hello config name today is config day of week. The way that we're going to do this is we're going to put this bash script that we're going to be creating into the resources directory. In the previous video, we went through the documentation all around the shared libraries. And this is the one section that we didn't dig into a whole lot because this video I knew was going to be arriving soon. So with loading resources, this gives us the ability that a shared library can load files from the resources directory by using the library resource step. And we have a full example that we're going to go through here in a few moments. But in short, what happens is we have library resource. We will reference the location of that file with it being relative to the resources directory, which we'll see in a few moments. And this loads it in as a string, just a plain string. That's all it does. So what we're going to be doing, and this next line is sort of the key part of what we're going to be doing. The file is loaded in as a string. It's suitable to pass to APIs. Let's say this string was actually just a static string. We could post that using curl or whatever other tool we want to use. But what we're going to be doing today is being able to save that file to a workspace using write file. And this is the key part of what we're going to be doing. We're going to be creating this bash script that we'll be able to write out to the agent and then execute that file on the agent to be able to do whatever. The use case for this is maybe you don't have something in place like Chef or Puppet or Ansible that takes care of managing files on your agent. And you just need to be able to push a file down quickly to that agent, execute it, and it be done. This is one of those ways that you can do it. So just at, at a glance as well for library resource, let's take a look at the documentation specifically for library resource. And it's just loading a resource file from a shared library. It actually does have two parameters. By default, the only thing that you have to give it is resource. Optionally, you can give it a different encoding. If you need to, that's the way you would do it. But in our example and what we just saw here, this is if you pass in just a single string to it, that's the value of the file that, you're, that is going to be read in. All right, let's go ahead and move back over to the shared library. And let's take a look at how we're going to do this. So I'm not going to modify hello world. We're going to leave hello world as is. I've created a new custom step 
that is named Hello World External. And what you'll see here with Hello World External is we have two lines. We have a load Linux script, which we'll look at in just a moment. And then we have an sh dot slash hello world and two parameters. Again, what we're trying to do is replicate what we were doing in hello world groovy and move it into hello world external with the big difference being that we've externalized the quote unquote heavy lifting out of the sh step and we have put that into an externalized script. Now, let's go back and take a look at what's going on here. We have load Linux script. Now that's another custom step that I've created. Now let's take a look at it right here, load Linux script. And we can see here that we have library resource, which is what we just looked at. And we're saying, hey, I want you to load in com slash planet pope slash scripts slash Linux and then config.name. Okay, so where is this and what is this config.name? Let's go back and take a look at our hello world external one more time. We're saying load Linux script name hello world.sh. Let's go up to the root of our shared library. We have a resources directory, and I have other examples in here, but I have com planet pope, I have scripts. I have Linux and I have Windows, but we're going to load up from Linux and hello world sh. And this file has an echo hello dollar sign one, today is dollar sign two. So we had to modify a little bit of what we were doing from hello world so we could still pass the parameters in. Now this is not a robust script. This is just for demonstration purposes. If this was live, I would be doing input validations on this script, I'd be doing a lot more. But the, the great thing about this is I could take this script and test it completely in isolation without even needing Jenkins around at all. I could just be working on this script and I could be passing in valid values, invalid values, no values at all. And I could make this script very robust and then it's made available for the shared library to use. Again, this is one way to do it. If it's getting really smart, I might not want to put it as a script inside of the shared library. I might want to have a completely separate program that I'm running and I'm just executing a program. So if it's lightweight enough, maybe it can stay here. If it needs to be heavier, then that's when you want to introduce a real program with a real programming language, with real testing frameworks that you can actually test those things in isolation. But this is that starting point of, hey, I could test this in isolation and then bring it into my shared library and then call it. So this is the basis, this is the script that we're gonna be running from our custom step, hello world external. Now, if you go back and notice back under vars, and we'll go back down to, let's go back to load Linux script first, okay? So we're loading in the value, the contents. Let me restate that. We're loading in the contents from this location. And again, this is just a helper custom step that I created so it would be easier to consistently load. So I, if I have created a Linux script, all of my Linux scripts go into this base directory structure, and then I can just give it a name. So I don't have to give it this full path every time. Again, you can choose what to do. This just was a simple example to show. So I load in this script, the contents of this file into script contents. Then we take script contents and we write it out using write file to the agent that we're running on. That's what write file does is it will take the string, in this case, script contents, and save it as a file down on our agent that we're currently in. And then next, because it's just a plain file at that point, I set the execute bit on that file. Follow along? Let's recap it. We're gonna read in the contents from a file. 
we're going to write that those contents out to a file that is down on the agent. And in this case, we're also going ahead and setting the execute bit on that file because we know that this is a Linux script, so why not go ahead and set the execute bit? Okay. Let's go back up to hello world external. So now what we've done in this one custom step is we said, hey, go and get the hello world sh file for me and write it out to my agent. That's what load Linux script does. And then the next step is similar to what we did in hello world. Except instead of just calling echo, we're going to now execute the hello world sh script based on the opinionation of what load Linux script does. Whatever the name is that we have here is the same name that's written out to the agent. And then we pass in the two parameters, config.name, day of week. So those are the two parameters that get passed in from our Jenkins file, which we can see here again real quick. Whoops, not there, there. Here are the two parameters of name and day of week. Those are the name and day of week. Again, if this is confusing right now and you haven't watched that other video, go stop right here, go and watch that other video, and then come back. Okay. So now we've gone through our script. We've gone through our custom steps for load Linux script. We've also gone through our new step for hello world external. Let's go ahead and modify our pipeline. Instead of using hello world, we are now using hello world external. That's the only change that we've made. Let's click on save, and then let's click on build now. And we'll take a look at the log. So let's look, once we get down into the pipeline, so it's telling us running on agent one, so I get into the stage, we see this call for library resource. We see write file, and then we're setting the execute bit on our script. Then we execute the script with our two parameters, and there is the output from the script. And that's pretty much it from how you would modify that existing hello world to instead of just doing an inline echo, make a call to a script that does the echo for us. And that's sort of an introduction to the resources section of a shared library. There's a lot more things you can do, and in upcoming videos, we'll go into some other use cases that you can use the resources for. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. Or you can also reach out to me on Twitter directly at Darren Pope. If this video was helpful for you, would you consider giving us a big thumbs up? And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there is new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you in the next video.